welcome to the Battle Zone and welcome to war. The following contest is a wasteland war. Already in the ring, from the AWL Dojo, trainees 27 and 34. And their opponents making their way to the ring from the wasteland. Heidi Howitzer and the National Wrestling Alliance World Television Champion Max the Impaylor, together they are the AWL World Joshi Tag Team Champion The Wasteland War Party And here you see the rules of a Wasteland War match no tags, no pinfalls, no DQ, no ring out, 30 minute time limit, elimination rules, submission, and knockout only. The uh, War Wasteland War Party has said these are the rules under which they will defend the AWL Joshi Tag Team Championship. And for some ungodly reason, the AWL Commissioner has agreed. This a non-title affair, obviously. The trainees from the AWL Dojo, not part of the main roster, not eligible to win or hold championships in this league. It's been a fantastic job, a fantastic short career for the AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions in the last, oh look at that, drop kick, but nobody there. Tonight, AWL history comes alive as for the first time in literal years, it's Video Cybernetico. The closer we can get to an actual Cybernetico match, it's going to be the Technicos, that's the name we haven't heard in a while, versus the Augments. There will be one final winner, and they will be the next challenger from AWL Strong and Free to the Grand Championship. Semi-final match, Kid Canada will defend the AWL Canadian National Championship for the third time against the Spirit Dragon Shenron, who has sworn that this is his season of gold in the Animated Wrestling League. Will he make that prophecy come true? We'll find out later tonight. For the first time in AWL history, FTW rules. Hook, Hibitsky. Hook versus Hibitsky. Hibitsky made Hook submit in uh, high speed rules last week. Tonight, it's Hook's field of battle. And we're going to have a four way scramble match with some of our younger, newer, and uh, really talent that's been kind of under the radar. Andre the Giant Panda, Ninja Matt, The Rock, and Razorwing all face each other in the four-way scramble later tonight. And that's all coming up soon here on the Animated Wrestling League. If you're liking any of these matches, if you like any of these ideas, please subscribe. If you like what you're watching, give us a subscribe. It costs you nothing, means everything to me. We're on a roll right now. I'd love to see 100 subscribers by the end of this season. We're nearly halfway through the season, and we've made a bit of a jump lately. Let's keep the momentum going. Now, we've had no elimination so far in this Wasteland War. The chairs have come into play, and that's completely legal. And remember, this is submission and knockout only. Neither uh, Maxine Taylor nor Heidi Howitzer are really known as submissions experts, but they can knock you out, especially Heidi with that with that tombstone pile driver. She seems to be going for it right now, but one of our trainees able to roll through and get out of it. Widowmaker. Interesting use of that maneuver. Haven't seen that since uh, since Cowboy Luke James, Peacemaker Luke James, left the animated wrestling league years ago. Oh, and the steel chair coming into play. We do try to teach all styles of professional wrestling in the AWL Dojo, and that does include the use of weapons. That does include the various definitions of the hardcore style of professional wrestling. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. We got some matches that could go on for a while tonight. And, of course, in our main event, Video Cybernetico, there will be no time limit. That match goes until there is one and only one survivor. Heidi Howitzer in the ring. Now I believe in this match, falls count in the ring only, but I don't know for sure. That wasn't on the, the graphic of, of rules, we might have to add that. 
Choke slam on the outside. I mean, you can knock somebody out pretty much anywhere. We'll see if anyone goes for a submission on the outside. The referee, senior official Joey Babaganoush of the famous Babaganoush wrestling family, does seem to have been briefed on these Wasteland War matches. And look at that over the top of a down right. Oh, nearly into the non-binary nightmare. Doesn't take them off their feet. Good grief. Oh, Stunner escaped from the full Nelson. Grabbing of the Shinai. That kendo sword. The Japanese equalizer, we call that. And I think it just shattered across the broad shoulders of Max the Impaler, the NWA undisputed television champion. Here we go. The war party on the war path right now. Up and down. Huge power slam, but no pinfalls, of course. No pinfalls in the Wasteland five War. This, we're only five minutes in. Christ. Okay, this is how they're going to defend the titles. Right now, over in Japan, Yin and Yang, the number one rank in the AWL Best Four for the Joshi Tag Division, they're watching this, and they're thinking, oh, crap, what are we going to go through now? Can we have the Dancing Queens back, please? At least we know how to avoid a countout. But this is war. This is taking what few limits we've got. Oh, no. Oh! A nasty angle of a dominator on the outside. And that looks like a, an international equalizer, the baseball bat. Coming into effect now. Up. Down. Tomb. Stone. Pile. Driver. And who's... How are these two still conscious? Let's do another one. Tombstone. Referee calls the knockout on one of the trainees. And now a trapezius claw hold. Not usually a submission. But... I think it... It is good enough here. That table will not be necessary. The Wasteland War Party with the elimination, double elimination, victory in this war. They won the titles, the tag team titles, in that Wasteland scrap match. And now they're going to be defending it in the Wasteland War. just grabbing onto their onto her shoulder and they absolutely demolish the trainee. Here we go with it. The Wasteland the War Party! And not incidentally, that brings the Wasteland War Party up to 7-0, undefeated in tag team action this season. They're going to be a challenge for anyone and everyone. We've got some great talent in uh, AWL Strong and Free. Let's throw them into the scramble. Why the hell not? We're starting off with the newest member of the AWL roster. The following contest is a four-way scramble match. Scheduled for three falls in two singers. Making it to from Beijing, China. Andre, the Giant. Panda! Andre the Giant Panda, the first Chinese citizen to ever compete in the Animated Wrestling League. Currently undefeated, but that's 1-0, and oh, and let's face it, it was against Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi. Are we really surprised? This match will be the first true test of this colossal creature. Stepping over the top rope like it wasn't even there. Andre the Giant Panda. This is not the first wrestling company he's worked in, but I believe this is the first one he's been signed to full-time. A freelancer up until now.
Ninja Mac coming here from uh, most recently Pro Wrestling Noah, where he spends a good bit of time. And let's face it, at this point, Pro Wrestling Noah is basically where um, various guests of other wrestling promotions hang out when they're not doing anything important. He's made himself a name in AWL High Speed Rule matches, but um, I'm not seeing him in a singles match in a while, and this isn't even a singles match. Now the man without a team. Last season at the season finale, the Rock's tag team partner, Eruption Solar, banished from the Animated Wrestling League after losing Bob Sumania. The Rock has been looking to restart his singles career, and a victory here could very well do that. Especially if he were to run the table and pick up three wins in the AWL win-loss record. Ninja Mac, by the way, one and two in his AWL career. The Rock, 28 and 24, by far the most experienced wrestler in this match. And on the plus side of the ledger, at plus four, a former Canadian national champion as well. And finally, the Wrestling Galaxy! Razor Wing, a Chikara veteran, I believe a former Young Lions Cup champion. I think all of the uh, Cyberhawks held that at one point. 11 and 13 in the AWL. He was a member of, of the AWL squad that threw Bullet Club goals for once and for all out of the Animated Wrestling League at our season finale. And hopefully this match could be the start of big things for him as well. Andre the Giant Panda, Ninja Mac. The Rock and Razor Wing. This is not a reshuffle match. None of these men are ranked. But a victory here, especially a sweep of three victories, would jump any of these guys massively ahead in the overall win loss rankings. And I'll also point out that Razor Wing, currently cu coming into this at minus two, eh, the. He needs to get on that positive side of the ledger, that's all I'm going to say. Razor Wing with the armbar now on T.H.E. Arosi, the rock, the great bird of mythology. An unusual individual, just take one look at him. Oh, what do we have here? Going up into a... Oh! Abdominal twisting crucifix slam, I think we might want to call that. Tiger Bomb, possibly. No! Pedigree! I mean, China does take good, keep good records of their panda's pedigree, so that could be a thing. Andre the Giant Panda with that double underhook face buster. The first cover of the match, Ninja Mac, attempting a quick cover on Andre the Giant Panda, trying to take advantage of the inexperience of the giant black and white behemoth. Now in this match, we have a 20-minute time limit, power slam, swinging power slam, hip attack, or tail attack, you might even call that. Not much of a tail, but a tail. And so far, no one's been able to really touch Andre the Giant Panda. And that may also be the fact that there's basically no tape of this guy. There's a couple of memes that went viral a, a, a while ago that got him onto the, uh, the, the, the attention, onto the radar of the Animated Wrestling League, got him a shot in the AWL Dojo. He, of course, had to earn his way in from there. Going up and over Lease! Wastelock trying to take 
Andre the Giant Panda down is The Rock, but up, no, wait a minute, Grump. Ninja Mac doing things that a man that size and shape should not be able to do. Razor Wing has also been active. And, oh! That's a very pretty flying maneuver there. I don't even know what he calls that. Razor Wing going to be looking for the Razor's Edge. The Rock going to be looking for the ROC BOTTOM, the spell check. Ninja Mac going to going to be looking for probably this, the backflip German. German suplex hold does not hold him for the cover. And now going for some sort of, oh, leg snap. Thought that was going to be a submission. Submissions valid in this match as are, for the first time tonight, obviously, pinfalls. And we've got plenty of action coming up for the rest of the evening. Canadian National Championship, Video Cybernetico. Make your popcorn now, ladies and gentlemen, because this is going to get intense. Oh, standing corkscrew moonsault by Ninja Mac. Again, look at Ninja Mac, because he looked like he should be able to do that, yet he can. Right hand, one. Another collar and elbow going up and drop. And the flare flop, Andre the Giant Panda. I mean, he looks ridiculous. Look at him. He's a giant panda. He's a wrestling bear. Even though he's not actually a bear. But, yeah, let, let, let's not get into that. He's a wrestling panda bear. ROC, B O T T O M. Check the spelling. Rock bottom into the cover. One. Referee super slow on the count here. What the hell? Snapping Kura Konrana from Ninja Mac. Trained by Booker T, Shucky Ducky, Quack Quack. Going up and boom! I think that was about a 6.30. One broken up. And that's interesting. The Rock saying essentially with that breakup that he wants all three wins. He wants all three points. He wants to take himself from plus four up to plus seven, and that would jump him into, I think, the top, let's see, that would basically jump him into the top ten of the men's division, of the Danchi division here in AWL Strong and Free. So, going for a classic sweep here. Razor Wing, on the other hand, looking for the Razor's Edge. And he gets it. The Razor's Wing, I'm sorry he calls that. Razor's Wing. One, two, because of the full wingspan of the victim. Razor Ramon called it the Razor's Edge. Other people have called it the Border Toss, the Cop Killer. It is here, the Razor's Wing. But look at this double trapezius claw hold. We just saw a submission for the Patezius hold a moment ago. And I don't know what Ninja Mac was going for there, but too many bodies in the ring. Vertical suplex. Takedown. And, oh, no, no, you cannot do that. Not a chance in hell. Hole. Nope, didn't think so. Andre the Giant Panda on his feet. Goes for a double choke slam or choke bomb, some people call that. Four men in the ring, nobody with motivation to dive to the outside here. Because you want all three of those victims. There's two strategies in this match. There's either go for the clean sweep, go for those vital three wins, three points, or survive. Be the last guy standing, get to that final two no matter what, and try, while, while taking as little damage as possible, try to take the win for yourself. Razor Wing, Andre the Giant Panda, Ninja Mac versus The Rock. Those would earn special singles matches anywhere in the world, but you're getting them right here in a four-way scramble here in the Animated Wrestling League. We are strong, we are free, we are the true north. Ooh! 
By the way, if you don't get the reference to the, uh, to the, in the name, when we founded this uh, Canadian branch of the Animated Wrestling League, that's a line from the Canadian National Anthem, O Canada, the true North strong and free. I mean, not the most historically accurate thing in the world, obviously, most national anthems aren't, but we thought that was a cool line for a wrestling, full name for a wrestling show, AWL Strong and Free. So we went for that. He is desperate to actually hit this Razor's wing up and down. The Rock in trouble here. One, two, kicks out 6.30 to Andre. One, two, senior official Joey Baba Ganoush of the famous Baba Ganoush wrestling family since have woken up. Back to his normal cadence of the three count, but still only getting these deep twos with only 12 minutes. Spell check! Spell check! R-O-C, B-O-T-T-O-M, check the spelling. One, two, three! Benjamin has been eliminated. One victory, two for Rock. All right, that's a win for The Rock. That's a loss for Ninja Mac. That means the absolute worst The Rock can do here is break even, and he's already the only guy on the plus side of the ledger. So that's a good position for The Rock to be in. Now he's got confidence and keeps going. Spell check again. R-O-C-B-O-T-T-O-M. One, two, kick out by Razor Wing. Andre the Giant Panda, I think, has taken the least amount of damage of anyone in this match so far. Oh! The power of the Thunder Thighs. No, okay, he tried this once. No, my God, no, no, absolutely no chance of that working. Belly to belly, overhead release, for the modification of the ministerial suplex. And now The Rock going for something. The Rock going for a, a power bomb position. No, he's looking for a super bomb. All the way down to the floor. It's one on one for all intents and purposes. Collar and elbow. Irish whip off of the ropes. Razor Ring might be dead. Razor Wing starting to twitch. Thank goodness. Slowly getting back to a vertical base. Reassuring the crowd, reassuring the fans that he's okay. But I can understand him taking a moment to get back into the squared circle. Referee not even bothering with a count on that one, figuring that Razor Ring will either get back into the ring or he won't. Ten minutes have elapsed. Ten remaining. Halfway through the time limit now, Andre the Giant Panda setting up for something stupid. Is it going to be stupid? Yes, it is. It is very stupid. Belly to belly slam. The Rock. He's not the biggest man in the match, but he might be the most muscular man in the match, and he is the most experienced in AWL competition. I think Razor Wing might actually be the most experienced overall total wrestling career. Irish whip, and no. This is the most, and there you see the most dangerous part of the match. When you've got three men in the ring, that means there's always somebody without a partner. Right now, it's The Rock. Swinging around for the DDT. Only nine minutes and change left. Now, right now, if The Rock... If this goes to a time limit draw, The Rock will be the only one to gain a point, and none of these three will lose anything. That would be basically a push, but an advantage to The Rock. He would go up to... 29 and 24, plus 5, and the others would be at least uh, no harm, no foul. Twisting around, DDT! Is it Damien's dinner time? I believe it might be. Right forearm, and a nasty shot into that. Pad, thankfully padded turnbuckle, and a lariat as a receipt, and oh no, Andre backing off, and I don't blame him, here we go, one, two, three, and now can the we Rock say mismatch? One victory, two razor wing. This 
might not take long. Razor Wing has tried the Razor's Wing on... Wait a minute. I, yeah, it's not going to take long at all. The Panda X Puresi putting this out of its misery. Here's our winner, Andre the Giant Panda. Well, congratulations to the still undefeated Andre the Giant Panda 2 and O. Oh. Last week, Habit Sky handed Hook his first loss in the AWL in high speed rules. Now, a different playing field. FTW rules, as you've noticed, we put very large quotation marks around the word rules because, quite frankly, there are none. No time limit. No disqualification, no holds barred, anything goes. Pinfall or submission or knockout to win the match. And I believe falls will count anywhere in the building. Now the FTW Championship is not on the line here. It's an unsanctioned title. The AWL Commissioner does not have the authority to require a title match. But another victory, a second victory by Hibitsky over the cold-hearted handsome devil would absolutely, in my mind, and earn him a title shot. Right. Conspicuous by her absence is, of course, the Manipulator, as well as the rest of the Monster Union faction, King Akira, Nekomusume, and Wild Thing. I believe sort of a gentleman's agreement, gentleman and gentle snake, perhaps? So this is going to be one-on-one, -on -one. no seconds, no managers, no tournaments. And of course, Hook, while he's had many tag team partners over the years, he has had very few friends. So this very much home field advantage for the cold-hearted handsome devil. Hebitsky comes into this match with a record of 29 wins, 30 losses, ratio of minus one. The victory here would not only, I think, honor bound Hook to give him a title shot, but would bring him up level, would bring him to plus minus zero in the win-loss record slowly slithering his way back, potentially, into title contention. No time limit in this match, therefore there will be no time calls. Anything goes. Bang the gong, we are on! And immediately, Abitsky closes the distance. And again, when I say anything goes, that means that Cobra Venom absolutely in play here. Backbreaker by the Serpentine Sensation to start us off here, the first real contact of the match. And that's the incredible speed of the snake style. Strike fast, strike first, strike hard, sorry, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. He is a practitioner of the snake style, not a master of it quite yet, but certainly a practitioner. Kick to the midsection by Hook to try to get himself out of trouble here. Now drop down, Lariat. Hook, of course, a background actually in lacrosse. Not what you'd think for uh, the background of a professional wrestler. Snake bite! Snake bite! Snake bite! Out of absolutely any angle. One, two. He can get to that snake bite from everywhere. Can heavy guy and the first one to go for weaponry. Oh no, and it's a sledgehammer. Hook happy to get that out of play. And right into the bike racks. 
and immediately blood spilt. Snakes do, of course, bleed. Roll through, pick up. This could go into the... Oh! Almost a modified Ushigoroshi right there. Hook, known for his, his throws, his suplexes, his judo-style moves. He's not a professional judoka. Oh, now he's got the sledgehammer. Oh! Right into the ribs of the Serpentine Sensation. The humanoid Ouroboros. And now Hook with a simple left hand to go straight down into a Reclamator. Going for the chin lock version here. Submissions valid on the outside. You see the referee in position outside the ring just in case that sledgehammer and now into the very human rib cage of Hook. And now going for the leg. Hook's head. No major knee injuries or leg injuries. Knee injuries so common to wrestlers, especially young wrestlers. Hook's been very lucky injury-wise in his career so far. I'd hate to see that streak broken tonight. Exploder! Exploding hookplex. One, two, kick out. I don't know if this is going to even get back in the ring. These two like fighting on the outside. We saw that. And their high-speed rules match a second time. The snake bite slithers into position. One, two, no. Hook, the man who gave Samoa Joe a run for his money for the AWL World's Championship. He's two and one in the Animated Wrestling League. The one in two and one is Hadith Sky. Already a fight forever. You know what? This is a match I think we could go back to. We could run this one back, round the horn, up and down the country, and all the and broadcast all the ships at sea, half and half. And Hook, is he going back to the hardware store? No, he isn't. What is he doing? Hook putting a lot of distance between himself and his opponent, and he's going for a Japanese equalizer, going for the Chennai. The crowd want tables. They. They almost got a table in the Wasteland War earlier tonight. Essentially, we're doing two hardcore matches in one evening. Now, I didn't know that there was going to be a Wasteland War match when I first heard that the, that the FTW rules, in beginning quotation marks, were coming to the Animated Wrestling League. A night of the unusual here on AWO Strong and Free. And if you like this kind of variety in your professional wrestling, please consider giving us a subscribe. Takes a second for you, means the world to me. Uh-oh, back to that damn sledgehammer. Oh, God, going right for the wrist. Going for the arm. Oh, God, trying to, break, trying to take away the grip. Take away the red rum. That's Hook's best weapon. One, two, he finished all, almost all of his matches, I believe, with the red rum. It's murder spell backwards, don't you know? I mean, that sort of worked for Relic, didn't it? No? No, it didn't. Irish whip over the top rope, back out to the floor. Habit's guy slithering out after his very, I'll even say his painfully, human opponent. Left hand. I, 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 I don't think Hook's a southpaw, but he's relying on those lefts. Maybe damage done to that right hand, I'm not sure. Uh-oh. Up and back up right into that bike rack, right into those seal barricades. Those are bike wraps with cloth slip covers over them. Snake bite countered. Lariat does not connect. Collar and elbow tie up. Back into the squared circle. The referee follows. And I think a beat guy just wants to end this from the top rope. Maybe thinking a splash. Maybe waiting for his opponent to stand. He may want another snake bite. A super snake bite. And he's going to get a snake bite. He thought it was a snake bite. But no, before you can capitalize. Hook in position, goes for the red rope. Cobra Venom! The nasty, the Cobra Venom, the blinding, stinging, Dogugiri! The Dogugiri for the one, two for the second time, three, no! Hook went for the red rum. Hook went for the red rum. Hibitsky countered with the Cobra Venom. Oh, 
Oh! Hook with an opportunity here. Hook, ne he needs to lock in that submission while he still can. And he's looking for it. Evitskaya making a big mistake, showing Hook is back. Waiting for the right position, for the right leverage. He's got it. Red Rum! Red Rum! Red Rum! Red Rum! Red Rum! Over there! Over there! One! No! It's... And they have now traded submissions. Hook submitted to the Anaconda Vice. And tonight, Hebitsky submits to Red Rum. I'd say they've each won on the other's home turf. Oh man, there it is, perfectly executed. The Red Rum, modified from his own father's Taz mission, picks up a quick, quick submission. I I think there was a chance he could have gone for the ropes there, but didn't. The cold-hearted, handsome devil, three and one in the Animated Wrestling League, ratio of plus two, as I try to talk over this music. If you ever listen to the lyrics of this, it's not nice. It's not for family consumption. This is not for kids, but we do want this to be open to as many audiences as possible. Hook with the win. Congratulations. Semi-final match already, ladies and gentlemen. Title on the line. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One short missionary knockout to decide the winner. And it is for the animated wrestling league, Canadian National Championship. The Spirit Dragon back in blue this season. Washed out of the first round of the Oshogatsu Taikai, but he's still plus 15 in the win loss record. He's 42 and 27. That makes him, if I'm looking at this correctly, that makes him in the top 10 of all wrestlers in AW All Star and 3. That makes him the ninth wrestler overall and the seventh highest ranked wrestler in the men's division, Danchi division. More than enough, I would say, to qualify for an opportunity at the contender's title. We call him the spirit dragon, hit you with the spirit bomb and have them all staggering. Sin rock. We call him the spirit dragon, come here, may I own you, it will leave a But here comes the most Canadian man in the world. He has 77 wins, 63 losses, ratio of plus 14. He has twice successfully defended the Canadian National Championship, and of course, five successful title defenses. He gets to cash that in for a shot at Emerald Dragon, or whomever the AWL Grand Champion may be. And with not one but two challengers from the United Empire coming down the pipe, that could be a bit of a difficulty in predicting where this is going to go by the time, if he gets there, Kid Canada completes the road less traveled. He has maple syrup in his veins, and he craps poutine. He's the most Canadian man in the world. He always rolls up the rim, if you know what I mean. He's the most Canadian man in the world. And here we go. There it is. The newest championship in the Animated Wrestling League. But so, so important with what you can earn with. Introducing first the challenger. Fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia. The Spirit Dragon. Shenmue. And his opponent is the reigning and defending animated wrestling league, Canadian National Champion, tonight making his third title defense. Fighting out of Calgary, Dramatic Falls, Alberta, Canada, the most Canadian champion in the world, Canadian Canada! And this is an officially sanctioned Canadian National Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWO Whitner presiding. 
pound of the bell, the AWL senior official, Joey Amakadoosh, in charge. Kid Canada is the eighth Canadian national champion. Looking to make his third title defense of a possible five. Only the second Canadian to hold the title after the, well, the formerly undefeated Amy Wade. We do indeed have a brand new Joshi champion. That's going to be a big deal over the next couple of weeks. Though we will not be seeing Wakazaki Ai immediately because she's off to graduate high school. Oof. Hot shot across the top rope to start us off here. 30 minutes on the clock in this championship match. I point out the extended time limit. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Maybe going for a victory roll but couldn't keep the grip. A massive unforced error by Shenron puts him in trouble here. Back handspring going for the head scissors. He's got it. Round and round and round he goes. The master of motion, as always, filing the physics textbooks under fiction in his personal dictionary. Oh, no. Oh! Back elbow escape by Shenron, who's giving up a lot of height. He's giving up size, power, but not necessarily experience. Kid Canada, 77 wins, 63 losses versus Shenron's 42 and 27. Of course, Shenron with a lot more experience outside the AWL as Kid Canada looking to do something stupid. And he does so. Tope Suicida. And manages to turn his body crossways. So it's a Suicida cross body, if you will. And since they are both on the outside, I'll remind you both of the 20 count on the outside under AWL rules, but also that the title does not change hands on a count out. This is not New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is not House of Torture nonsense. You will only become a champion in the Animated Wrestling League by pinfall, submission, or knockout. So a knockout can certainly happen on the outside. Crucifix into the cover of the referee out of position here. One, two, and I think Shenron got very, very lucky. That could have been a, a flash pin by Kid Canada, one of the last masters of the dungeon. Coming out of the original Dungeon 1.0. And wait a minute, Shinji Dai Sunrise attempt. That's not something that Kid Canada would usually go for. He's not a second generation wrestler. Maybe trying to confuse and uh, outwit his opponent, and it backfired rather badly, though Shenron getting alley-ooped up and over the top. Kid Canada relying on the size and the power advantage. You can see this is a physical mismatch, but we have no weight limits. We have no weight divisions in the Animated Wrestling League, so it all, all's fair in love and war, and professional wrestling frequently is both. Oh god, he's looking for a very Canadian spear, I think, here, is he? Yes, he is! Spear, 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 spear. One, two... Damn. Shenron knows that championship opportunities do not come around every day. Not everyone gets a title match, and another flip around into the power... Sorry, the, the power slam. Over the shoulder power slam, and again, the referee a little bit slow to start the count here. Maybe between the Wasteland War and the FTW rules, the referee's just too tired of watching people pull things that should be illegal. And I hope he's not too tired. We still have a video cybernetico match coming up, and Tope Suicida again this time. Shenron Comic saw it coming and got out of the way. Hollow and elbow tie up into a Hurricane Rana. Our automated camera drones trying to get you the best shots. They don't always succeed, but they are programmed to try their best. And oh, drop kick! No! Did not get all of that, did Shenron, but an opportunity here looking for the Ruby Rana. Shenron. Belly to belly slam from Kid Canada to Shenron there. Shenron, a Rey de Voladores winner in Chikara, King of the Flyers. 
And I think Kid Canada knows that, trying to keep him grounded right now. Dropping down, grabbing a hold, trying to stretch him like Stu would do back in the dungeon. Couple of hard shots, but this is something uh, Stu could never do. Canadian Destroyer for the knockout! And just like that, because guess what? In the hands of a true Canadian, it's still a finishing move. He's Satsuaza, Canadian Destroyer. Here's the winner and two Canadian National Champion, Kid Canada! Kid Canada. Three down and two to go. And before he gets, could be the Emerald Dragon. Could be Great O'Conn All Hail. Could be Will Frickin' Osprey. Stay tuned to the Animated Wrestling League to find out the future of the Canadian Champion. Main event time, the Augments and the Technicos. Video, Cybernetico. The following contest is your main event of the evening. And it is... Video! Introducing the Vermis Tag Team number one. The tag team combination of the Pelican Fighter, the Technical Wizard, Lady Masters, the Super Master, and Nick. Together they are the reigning and ruling World Tag Team Champion, the New Colossus! And here you see the rules. In Phase 1, it's an Elimination Trios match. Phase 2, any surviving members, if there's more than one, of the winning team must wrestle in an Elimination match until there is one and only one winner. There is no batting order, as in a traditional Cybernetico match. That's what we call it, Cybernetico. And because this is being done in a video game. And their tag team partner, making his Way back in Season Zero, Matt Classic Sr. brought together the best technical wrestlers he could find to create his trio, to create his stable, the Technicos, and they stand before you united many, many years later. Introducing next team number two, making their win of the ring from the border for the tag team combination of Project Q, 3.0, and Jigoku Destroy. Jigoku Destroy at 137 wins and 75 losses, ratio of plus 60 frickin' 2. Number one wrestler in terms of win-loss record in the AWL. Number two is Project Tetsu. 98 wins, 59 losses ratio of plus 39. Which means any time that there's an opportunity to add somebody to the list of future challengers for the AWL Grand Championship, these two have got to be in conversation. But when the AWL Commissioner decided to resurrect Video Cybernetica, we haven't done this, I think the last one was like 2017 that we did this. Well, we needed a third male augment. And there's only going to be one of those available. And it's not going to be a Dr. Jigoku or original. You can hear it echoing throughout the arena. Subite, Jigoku Hakase no Tameni. All for Dr. Jigoku. Jigoku Hakase no Tameni. Subite, Jigoku Hakase no Tameni. And finally, making his over to the ring. Originally, from the laboratory of Professor Nicodemus. Representing the Crazy Team, 
Originally, Alex the Castigator. Sorry about that. Together they are the Augments indeed. Originally, Calix the Castigator. Upgraded by Dr. Jigoku. He's more machine now than man. And he has a 5 and 4 record in the Animated Wrestling League. So everybody in this match well on the plus side of the roster. The winner of this match, and there can only be one winner, will be added to the best four the second a slot opens up. So essentially this is a fight for five. No time limit whatsoever in this match, so buckle up, this could go for a very, very long time. We're going to start off with an elimination trios match, which means up to five falls, as few as three. And of course, each fall is a win in the Animated Wrestling League. But as this is a trios situation, and these are teams, it will be one victory for each member of the team at the end of Phase 1. However, once we get to the match beyond, once we get to Phase 2, if there is one, then it's every fall counts, because it will be an elimination rules match. If it's an Elimination Trios match, that's great. If it's a one-on-one -on -one match, that's great as well. If there's only one sole survivor in Phase 1, there won't even be a Phase 2, so what am I talking about? This is the closest we could get to the Cybernetico rules. And again, we haven't done this in, I would say, going on, like, seven years. 2017, the last one that I can find. And that was part of our National Pro Wrestling Day event. And that was a match to determine the AWL Intercontinental Champion. Tag made to the new guy on the block, Mecha Kallax. Dr. Jigoku took a personal interest in continuing the work of Professor Nicodemus. Tag is made and comes the Suplex Master Sammy Nix, the first... Ma the first Oh, wait a minute, the classic claw getting pulled out already. Just about two minutes or so into the match. I'm going to be very rough on any time estimates here. As with no time limit, there is no time call in this bout. Jikan Muse again. No time limit. Or the time limit is infinite. Would be almost a better translation. The, the, uh, the Cybernetico match coming to us from Mexican Lucha Libre, popularized in Chikara, of course, in the United States. The trios match, equally popularized in Mexico. A lot of our AWL style of rules, our AWL style of wrestling, inspired by Japanese Kuroresu. And we've got three Americans and three robots. One of whom I know used to be Japanese. So truly an international organization, the Animated Wrestling League, and there is no such thing as an AWL style. Desperation tag mate, and by instinct to his regular tag team partner, Sammy Nix kicks out and brings in... Ooh! Fisherman Brain Buster there. Lee Masters eating that Fisherman Brain Buster to Jigoku destroy. Another thing to take note of, the new classics, undefeated in 2-on-2 two -two tag team action this season, 3-0. and oh. The Augments, 3-2. and two. They've had two more tag team matches, but they've lost two of them. Including a title defense against the new classics. The new classics coming out on top of the Augments. But this is not about the tag team titles. This is not about any kind of non-existent trios title that I really, really wish we could have, but we can't. I just can't make it work, I'm sorry. Tag, are we going to see another tag? No, we're not, going up to the middle rope. Thinking better of it, Lee Masters, maybe with a strategic mistake there, he's known to, he has been known to be a little bit of a hothead, a little bit of a glory hound in the past. Oh no, that's good. Never mind, a good escape by the Season Zero original. Look at, oh! Oh, the finger snap, the small joint manip manipulation. Illegal in mixed martial arts, perfectly fine in the animated wrestling league. It's just a little bit creepy. 
a Season 0 original versus a Season 2 addition to the Animated Wrestling League. So veteran upon veteran upon veteran. I believe with the exception of Mecha Calyx, everybody in this match with well over 100 matches, close to 200. Uh, Jigoku Destroy... Yeah, Jigoku Destroy with over 200... Yeah, with over 200 matches in the Animated Wrestling League. And, of course, that dates all the way back to his time in uh, Crisis Gundan, his time as the Japanese destroyer Hakaisha, and now as a member of Dr. Jigoku's brainwashed slaves, the Beret Corps, not to mention a full augment. Project Tetsu 3.0, who has been around the AWL almost as long. I believe, I, I don't, I think he is a Season 0 original, I'm not entirely sure. Certainly at least Season 1. But a veteran's veteran, this is his 158th match in the Animated Wrestling League. Sammy Nix, and we've got two members of the one, sorry, we've got one member of the 100 win club, Sammy Nix going up against someone with 98 wins. This match could get him to 100. A victory here in Phase 1, another victory or two in Phase 2, and he'd be at the 100 win mark. Would Project Tetsu 3.0? Sammy Nix had 103 wins in his AWL career. There's only three members of the AWL Strong and Free roster who are in that elusive 100 win club, and two of them are in this match. The only one not here is Hassan. Tag made, and interesting, a super heavyweight like the former Kalis the Castigator jumping over the top rope like that. Tag cold kick with a double back elbow, but when you're that much of a powerhouse, you don't need to be fancy about it. As Mecha Kalix, with that Mano Metallo like right hand, slugging it out. Matt Classic Sr. in the ring when he's not supposed to be. The referee will take um, account of the fact that he was brought in against his will. And here we go. Technical perfection. A perfect big back body drop by the seven-time AWL World Tag Team Champions. Held that title more than anybody else and the greatest tag team wrestler in AWL history a ten-time AWL Tag Team Champion with multiple partners is Lee Masters. Matt Classic, the inventor of the Animated Wrestling League, came into the AWL in Season 0 as one of the WSX, Wrestling Society X Refugees. When that organization closed down, several of their people came over here, and now the Classic Claw, the move that he taught to Fritz Von Erich a very, very long time ago, and Fritz pretended it was his own because Fritz was kind of an asshole, if you hadn't noticed. Looking for the big body slam, not going to get it. The full body slam, that's a match ender for Matt Classic, or it was back in the day. As he gets thrown around that AWL ring by Jigoku Destroy, who goes for the first German. He likes to go for the hat trick. Well, get this reference in Canada. Hat trick suplex subtype. German. Shoots the half very close to the ropes, however, one, but still needing the breakup from Sammy Nick. This is why there's no time limit in this match. Elimination trios. You've always got at least one person to. Uh oh. Tatsumaki, we're going to need another breakup. And we get it from Lee Masters this time. Going up top, and elbow drop from the top, and a roll away by a former AWL Grand Champion. Incidentally, four former AWL Grand Champions in this match. That would be Jigoku Destroyed, Project Tetsu, Sammy Nix, and Matt Classic Sr. Lee Masters, the only veteran in this match who has never held the AWL Grand Championship. Like I said, ten-time individual tag team champion with three different partners. Stunner. Lee Masters has also held some singles gold in his career, not here in the AWL, 
But over in the United Kingdom as the British Openweight Champion. And now, tag Koge up, tag Kogeki opportunity. And arm breaker, technical perfection. This team has become the seven time World Tag Team Champion based on their tag Kogeki abilities. And now the three headed monster, the German, the dragon, the X Plex, the Chimera Plex combination. One. That's the move, the back in 2017, which I believe was the last year we had one of these. Video Cybernetico events. That was the move that won Sammy next to Shogatsu Taikai. Irish Whip back into the corner. Neutral corner this time. Sammy Nick looking to do. What is he doing? Oh, beautiful vertical suplex. That's how you compensate for a height difference. Unbelievable. The suplex master. True mastery. A true specialist. In professional wrestling, you don't see a lot of those anymore. Especially not even here in the Animated Wrestling League. Irish Whip into the corner. Coming up. Oh, kick right to that mechanical leg. Maybe trying to take out one of the joints, one of the mechanical joints that now make up the leg of the former Calyx the Castigator. And tag made between the regular tag teams. And these three were a trio. It's not like they've never worked with their partner before, but just the fact that you've got a regular tag team, and such a great regular tag team, that they're the champions of the world. They're going to favor each other in tag team competition. As Mecha Calyx now attempting to crush the life out of Lee Masters. Now, we are, we are over ten minutes into this match now. And this has, we have not had a single fall, we've had a few attempts, but the breakups have been quick and clean. Now maybe trying to finish this off with a Tetsu driver. You thought to was no. Gimmick infringement, that's what we're trying to finish this off with. That rear naked choke. Just a scan, copy, and taste by the Augment Technology. Matt Classic calling for the tag. He's desperate for it. Look at him straining that old school desperation. He wants into this match. He wants to fight the biggest and the best in the Animated Wrestling League. And remembering that the two primary Augments, Project Tetsu and Jigoku Destroy, they're the top two ranked wrestlers in the it all of AEW all strong and free and in the men's division who's number three is matt classic matt classic the number three rank he wants into this and by the way that's rank in terms of win loss records not in terms of the aw all best four but these guys all have the right to be in this match seriously the top five active men in the animated wrestling league jigoku destroy project tetsu matt classic Sammy Nix, Lee Masters, in that exact order, and frankly, the only the only other person who's in exactly this top league is Black Tiger Justice, and he's out injured. He's not eligible to compete at the moment. So right now we've got five of the top five Danchi Pro Wrestlers in this company, or at least in this branch, and they're all fighting for a chance to be in the AWL best four that as soon as any slot opens up one kick out this match could go on all day or easily we're about 15 we're coming up on 15 minutes in and remember we need a fair we need a total of five falls we have yet to get one tag made Ooh, lifting me by Project Tetsu, the robot, the cyborg. I don't know if there's anything human left about him. Once more, going for the Chimera Plex. That triple suplex combination from the Suplex Master. Will he hold the bridge? Yes, he does. But the bridge can be so easily broken by the Destroyer. Jigoku Destroy. Beautiful suplex. Some sort of an exploder there. The problem is, anytime I watch Sammy Nick's wrestle, I'm learning new variations of the suplex. Which, when you think about it, is kind of a problem when you're a professional wrestling announcer. You're supposed to know the names of all the moves. That's 
That's kind of one of the basics. Nasty Lariat here by Sammy Nix, showing he's more than a, su a suplex one-trick pony. Ooh! Sliding with those knee strikes. Trying to do as much damage as possible. Remember, a lot of suplexes target the head, the neck, the shoulders of the opponent. So a knee strike could do that as well. German. Oh, wait a minute. We've got a disqualification count happening here. Referee was coming over a... Oh. Jigoku Destroy, not legally in the ring here. Senior official Joey Baba Ganoush from the famous Baba Ganoush wrestling family trying to deal with that tag made between the new classics. They took that name in honor of their mentor. And wait a minute, going for the disaster lock, the master of disaster. The disaster lock, the family hold, and the tap out of clear tap. Roger Tutsu, 3.0 has been eliminated. Fantastic, and it is now a two on three handicap match. And Jigoku Destroy can, sorry, Project Tetsu 3.0 can not, even if his team were to win this match, can not become the sole survivor. Sammy Nix now trying to close the gap, but walks right into a pointed metal elbow. Dr. Jigoku, the diabolical Dr. Jigoku, the mad scientist of professional wrestling, replacing most of his charges bodies with mechanical parts, making them far more dangerous than an average wrestler, making up for, quite frankly, a limited actual skill in most of them. You don't have to be good when you're just playing strong. And it looks like Lee Masters and Sammy Nix both busted open now. Irish whip, double big back body drop from the super heavyweights. First time, I think it might be the first time ever those two have done the tag Kogeki. And that's still going to be the advantage of the Technicos. Tag team experience, trios experience coming up here. Sit out, power bomb. A delayed Liger bomb, if you prefer. One, two. Lee Masters breaking it up. Kallax. Looking to prove himself to the Augment. To his new master, the diabolical Dr. Jigoku, the, the bad doctor himself. And he, oh, he, 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 in comes Matt Classic. See your Lariat! Massive takedown. That wasn't even a Lariat, that was actually a clothesline. And you see that giant fist, that metal fist, being used to bring people in and around a disqualification. Could work for an elimination here as well. Body slam! Matt Classic with the full body slam, but not even a one count off of it. Lee Masters has got to get out of here. The referee waiting for him to come to. Wait to the Classic Claw. We've already had one submission of an augment. He's got that incredible grip. I've seen him crush apples and turnips. Apples and turnips, my friends. Apples and turnips. And now automatically legal, Tatsumaki. He saw to us a Tatsumaki! The Suplex Master is out on the outside. Lee Masters has to come in to break it up. And so far, it has been teamwork, teamwork, teamwork that has saved the day at least 20 times in this match. German gonna go for the hat trick suplex, subtype German. And we could have the first elimination here. For the Augments, could Jigoku destroy? Run the table, get himself, make himself the sole survivor. No phase two. Yes, he could. Again, Tatsumaki. And Matt Classic is out. The referee accidentally takes a hit. It's martial law in there right now, ladies and gentlemen. And everybody else. We got. Do we have any non-binary viewers? I hope so. Please uh, let me know down in, the, down in the commentation station. Going up to the white rope. Oh, big mistake. That's as high as he ever flies. Matt Classic, not a high flyer. German. Single release German. And notice how much distance, a good 20 feet, that put between the head and the hands of Matt Classic. 
and his partners. Jigoku destroyed perfectly, cutting the ring in half here. Belly to belly drop, doesn't even go down on the slam. But still, Matt Classic Sr. keeps standing up. He goes for the wrist lock, now he's going to the corner. He wants a tag Kogeki of his own to put this guy away. But the founder of the Technico is still slipping out the back, still finding ways to be a thorn in the side of Dr. Jigoku's prize possession. The only augment that he's put his own name on, Jigoku, destroy tag made to Lee Masters. We could have a three-way phase two here, folks. Vertical suplex, rear naked choke going to be a third submission. Unbelievable. The have been eliminated. So begins the match beyond. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, friends become foes, allies become enemies, teammates become opponents. That is the vicious, nasty nature of video cybernetico. And a double head vice, a double claw hold. Matt Classic Sr. working extremely hard here. Clothesline, almost an axe bomber. Now, is this the first time these three have fought each other? Absolutely not. They've had, tri they've had triangle matches against each other in the past, and they've certainly trained together in the past. They've sparred together. They've each sparred with their teacher, Matt Classic. He's had them spar with each other. They've wrestled each other one-on-one -on -one multiple times. Nobody's new to this. But they've wrestled for more than 21 minutes now. Oh, sight! I believe it was a Saito suplex. Matt Classic's going to be looking. So far, every fall in this match has come down to submission. Oh, right, huge spear. Not usually the bailiwick of Lee Masters. This is your main event, ladies and gentlemen. This is the best wrestling we can offer you. If you've liked this, heck, if you're still watching like an hour and 12 minutes into this, then, you know, please, please, please leave a like. You're obviously one of our top fans. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscription if you're not here. You're a, you're an elite. You are all elite as a wrestling fan, as far as I'm concerned. Oh! And the bear feet into the face. A dangerous maneuver for the attacker. Well, I say bear feet. He's got those MMA-style uh, foot wraps. Not traditional wrestling boots. I think Matt Classic still gets annoyed that the Lee Master does that, even though he does have respect for the Master's background as a combat athlete. Cover here against the Sensei, the student to the teacher, the long, long, long graduated. That Senpai Kohai, that Sensei Seiko uh, relationship, that never really goes away your entire life. Heck, I've been a professional magician now for going on a year. And if I were to meet one of my magic teachers from Japan again, though I, I, I likely never will, I would say, you know, Ohayou gozaimasu, Sakurai Sensei. Yeah, I, I would still call them Sensei. Because that's what they are. Vertical suplex. So I would have to boy mode to do that, and I don't want to, though. All right, here we go. Classic claw locked in. This could, now, all three of these men have won a single match. They've won the trios match. But two falls available now. They could all walk out with three wins in the win-loss record. And Lee Masters, he's at 99 wins. He could, he could easily enter the 100 win club with just one win. He could beat one of these guys. Doesn't even have to be the sole survivor. Electric chair suplex, a Texas plex, he calls that. Sammy Nix, the American, he's at 104 wins. Could go up to go up to 106. Matt Classic Sr. at 79, sorry, now at 80 wins. Could go to 82. Cover, one, two. And I think Lee knows he only needs the one. Lee knows he's got these numbers in his head. We all think of, of athletes, we all think of sports as being the big dumb jock, but the great athletes they're mathematicians. They know the stats. They know the figures. They know what they need to do to make the numbers work in their favor 
And right now, Lee Masters knows he only needs one win to get himself into that elite few. The creme de la creme of animated wrestling, the AWL 100 Win Club. Right now, there are three members in AWL Strong and Free. There are two members, Tiger Mask 2 and Gombahishi Dark in AWL Huntai 5 in the entire league. Could Lee Masters become the sixth member of the 100 Win Club? Tonight, he's at 90 frickin' 9. Vertical suplex. Oh, hanged out to dry. Hung out to dry, I should say. One, two. Lee gets it up. Bit of a knee drop across the face. Almost a Mr. Wrestling 2 style maneuver. Collar and elbow tie up. Tip drop down. The arm control, the bicep and the tricep now being attacked. And that's smart. That's his dominant hand. That's the hand that does the classic claw. And it's, yeah, there's a lot of grip strength in that, but you need to have the arm, the muscles in your arm working as well. Vertical suplex. He loves this transition, the mix of professional wrestling and mixed martial arts, but no. It is a challenge to suplex the suplex master. It can be done, but it's not easy. And he'll give you three. For every one you give him, Chimeraplex. One, two. Now notice, not in, not too many breakups going on here. I think I think at this point they're just tired. You know, more than uh, the, almost 27 minutes now. This could go to the half hour. This could be the longest match in AWL history. We don't do hour-long matches here. This could make it. Norm normally our longest time limit is a 30-minute time limit draw. We are... We're coming up on that right now. We're only about... Yeah, we are 27 minutes in. Aeroplane spin. That could be the cover if he falls down in the right way, but he will not. DDT! DDT! The double danger tandem for the one, two... Just barely. You can see the desperation. That was not a, a kick out. That was a just, that was a, you know, throw your arm in the air and hope it gets there. Low drop kick. Unable to get the height. A drop kick should normally go for the chest or the head. Ooh, great escape by Lee Matt, by Sammy Nix, but he gets a drop kick from Matt Classic. That's, what, that's the problem with these sort of situations. Gut wrench. Suplex. And of course, Lee Masters has trained with Sammy Nix for decades now. Oh, well, well over a decade at least. Closer to two than to one, quite frankly. One, two, kick out. Collar and elbow tie up. Going for, oh, just throws him out of the ring. Matt Classic wants this to be one on one. At a, I'm just going to say it, a classic technique. Isolate one opponent in a triple threat situation. And he's going to fly King Kong knee drop. He never goes to the top and it still is not enough. This is what these men will do to enter the 100 wing club. This is what these men will do to become just a challenger. Not even a number one contender, a challenger for the AWL Grand Championship. And that cut reopened. Over the four, over the eye, one, two. Cut reopened over the eye of the suplex master. That's going to drip down into his eye. It's going to impair his vision. And yeah, right now I don't think he can see where his opponent is, at least not clearly. And of course, a lot of people. Do oh, lariat down once again. Matt Classic literally smells blood in the water. He creates a separation. And that bare knee, that's bone on face. The man with special dispensation for the, the otherwise mandatory knee pads. Going for the aeroplane spin. No, back elbow escape attempt. Drops down. Every Nobody can keep a grip on anybody. German! Dragon! 
Xplex Kai, Maraplex, the three-headed monster professional wrestling. One, two, three. Not classic, and we are down to the tag team champions wrestling one on one for an opportunity at the top singles belt in the animated wrestling league, dare I say in YouTube wrestling, dare I say in the world, the AWL Grand Championship. This is for a chance to slay a dragon, picks him up, rear naked choke, rear naked choke, rear naked choke. 100 wins! Lee Masters becomes the sixth member! Only the sixth member of the 100 win club! That is what you call leaving it all in the ring. Oh, that was pro wrestling. We'll see you next week. Still more surprises in store, but for tonight, thank you so much for watching. Kodade, Naridah.